Now, obviously, the other big threat to uh, human rights is obviously the ironically titled Australian Human Rights Commission. Now, uh, mm -hmm. you put your name forward to be the next uh, president of the Australian Human Rights Commission, which uh, the government, they, they went with what most people thought was the safe option of Rosalind Croucher. Um, so why do you believe, like, uh, this government, they're, they're so afraid at shaking up government bodies such as the Human Rights Commission or the, the ABC for that matter. Well, look, I applied for the position. That would be my financial liberation because the salary is $500,000. <laughs> and they, they gave to Professor Croucher. I think she is wealthy enough. She wouldn't need all this money. Uh, another thing, I find it's... If, but it's just just this absolutely immoral because um, she's probably getting earning more than the prime minister. And another thing is um, is that um, it seems that she was heavily political. That uh, uh, other person, the Triggs, Professor Triggs, I was even asked by Andrew Bolt if I could do a better job than Triggs when I was interviewed by him, and I told him that it, it wouldn't be hard. <laughs> You know, it would be quite easy. I think she did a very poor job. And, and you know, Croucher was a safe uh, ground position for the government. She's going to be very good to the Labour Party, as she can be very good to the coalition, because she's very so-called moderate. So-called moderate is the one that is sitting on the fence. So basically what Croucher is going to do is to be lovely and the government to be so comfortable. But I don't think it should be the, the case, you know. I think we should have someone who is really fighting for the restoration of fundamental rights and freedoms in this country. And I don't think this is going to happen. And seven years, I mean, normally you don't give out that to a person when she's a, a person is appointed to such a position. I think uh, Brandis might love this woman. They have be, might be good mates because I haven't heard of such a long-term appointment in my whole life. Normally, when you give to uh, appoint someone to a commission, it's only for about two or three years, and then you can renew. That happened with me and my fellow commissions at the Law Reform Commission of Western Australia. I have never heard of someone earning now assurance that she's going to be seven years going on half a million dollars, half a million dollars a year. Well, I, I would love it, but uh, certainly because I support too much free speech, perhaps I'm too much a protector or a fighter for real human rights, I am not. Uh, I was not conceded to the position. Because it's real human rights that I support, not the fabricated ones of the United Nations, for instance. It was interesting that uh, the Abbott government, when it first came to power, they did show signs they were prepared to take on institutions like this. They appointed um, Tim Wilson uh, to yeah. the Human Rights Commission, which uh, you know everyone on the left had a had a fit about. And we, yeah. uh, but since Turnbull's taken over, I mean, there's been Ed Santo, who I haven't heard boo from, so they seem to have re reverted back to you know we don't want to upset too many people. Yeah. Well, that's what the, um, the so-called conservatives in the Liberal Party do. I mean, they probably want to be nice to people who would never ever contemplate voting for them. Think about, for instance, like that uh, his popularity rate seems to be uh, higher of the prime minister than of the opposition leader. But that doesn't reflect in, in the in the you know in votes for the labor for the liberal party because people who tend to think that um, um, Tombo is doing a good job is because they are labor supporters but i don't think he's going doing a good job because of, there are a couple of things that are very important if you call yourself a liberal party you should be supporting more liberty and more freedom and that's not happening so I think that it's a, a terrible thing when you have a so-called right wing, I don't even like this word, but let's, let's call it right wing, but not doing anything to limit the size of government, to limit government, to reduce taxes, and to restore basic rights and freedoms. Quite to the contrary, this, as I say, like this guideline that the Attorney General produced, 
it's it's undermining human rights. It's going to be undermining rights, not giving rights to anybody. And another thing is like if you think that uh, their approach to free speech is very weak, it's not uh, good enough, and I don't see this lack. Uh, what I feel is a lack of commitment to fight for classical liberal values. I think that's one of the main problem problems here in Australia at this point, and uh, certainly we deserve better leadership. Well, let's uh, put forward that the government did have the, the courage to uh, appoint you president of the Australian Human Rights Commission. Uh, what would you? What would be some of your first actions in the job? Well, we have, for instance, today's issue of same-sex marriage. Regardless of what is the, the outcome is, we have to consider this in the context of protecting all human rights. So it's an interesting position. It's almost same, same, well, something that looks like that uh, reminds me at least the Republican referendum. When you had the people being told you can vote for this thing, but we do not to know how the law is going to be uh, drafted. I, I would say that as an Australian Human Rights Commissioner, that before you, you uh, introduce such a referendum, people should have the right to know what kind of law is going to be uh, enacted, because otherwise you might change your mind. Certainly, I would re-establish the right of people to exercise a very democratic and basic principle, that is the principle of freedom of speech, and certainly in respect not only of our various and traditions, democratic values and traditions, but I would say in respect of the Constitution itself. Because what, what I have mentioned to you is that some of our members in Parliament seem not to know that um, implied in our constitution, there is a freedom of political communication. And it seems to be ignored by um, uh, politicians. You, you shouldn't have to wait for the high court at a very costly price to make a decision that our politicians should know better. So definitely, even though the, the Human Rights Commission is a, a statutory body separate, like it doesn't have the ability to make laws, there's a lot that the President can do to uh, not be, uh, well, for example, what happened to the, the QUT students. I mean, that was Triggs who, who let that get out of hand. So there is uh, things that the President can do to basically limit the, the harm that uh, the, the Human Rights Commission can do if it is to exist. Absolutely. I think what we need to expect is that the president of the Human Rights Commission is not going to further aggravate the erosion of fundamental rights in this country. Certainly, it was an undermining of the rights uh, of those students. Think about, for instance, like what happened with them. I think it's... Um, a very terrible thing when you have the process being the punishment. I think, look, in many ways, even if you're found to be innocent at the end of the story, uh, how can you recover from the trauma and even to be called a racist for a statement that was actually against racism in that, in that particular environment? And so there is a cruelty to people who might be even suffering from uh, delusion that they are victims of racism. I think many people might actually accuse people and, and seek a lawyer when they should actually seek a psychologist. Because, you know, in many ways what these people need is uh, psychological assistance rather than having a lawyer, uh, probably a shock, basically yeah. using this poor person as an instrument, uh, you know, just to be used, using the person to see if she can um, offer financial benefits as a result. Of course, like, there are many lawyers who seem to be forgotten the purpose of the law. That is that we should have courts of justice and not courts of injustice. As a, as a legal theorist, I always tell my students that the purpose of the law is to generate justice and provide for the common good, protecting the rights to life, liberty and property. And it seems to be so uh, forgotten these days. I mean, most of the lawyers just think about the pockets, and that's the main problem. 
that's the problem with this legal nihilism and narcissism that we find find in these days. I mean, people seem to be really not concerned about real human rights and protection of the individual. Uh, that's an important point that you know if if somebody feels that you know they're oppressed they've got the whole power of the law to ba basically you know push you know what what they think in their their mind is happening to them and basically you know pr uh, not just ruin the the people who they're making the complaint against but have a broader impact on the the whole community mm -hmm. well and another thing is the total inversion of the honors of the proof in some uh, cases i mean so that that assumption that you are you are guilty until your innocence can be proven and that's another undermining of the rule of law and certainly like one of the things we had in, in the common law tradition is the idea of objective reason and, and practical reason and this whole idea that you know we actually know the law it's impossible for you and me to be law-abiding if the law is so highly uh, abstract and subjective. So this problem is that the problem that we face is that some laws are constructed in, in su such a way as to make it impossible a normal compliance with the with the rules. Because uh, if I depend on what other persons think, uh, or other person is thinking, if I if I have to de rely on the tolerance of the other person that, that is uh, engaged in a discussion with me, I'm completely unprotected. And even if I want to obey the law, I might actually fail because the law might be subject to different interpretations. I mean, so I think this is that pause more than reality where we live, that uh, everybody can do whatever they think and interpret things the way they wish. And most of these laws are not based on a tradition of natural law, or law of reason, or objectivity, but it's basically about tastes and feelings of people that can vary from person to person. Now, you've talked a bit about uh, Rosalind Croucher, that she's basically a safe pair of hands who can get along with uh, both Labour uh, and the Liberal Party. Uh, in your opinion, will she have the, the will or the courage to significantly change the operation of the, the Commission? Um, that is a good question. I, I, I have the impression that, you know, she's going to be uh, aware of what the government of the day uh, wishes her to um, how to conduct himself, if I can put it like that. But certainly if we get a Labour government, I think uh, in many ways the problems can be brought back to the equation. And certainly like um, the point with this kind of appointment is that Labour loves disappointments. I mean, one thing that's amazing is that when you get Bill Short and in, in the opposition praising what you you do, it, it's like a very strange thing to me. I think we should have actually a, 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 an opposition uh, somehow thinking, well, this was not exactly what I want, but then we had the opposition uh, celebrating that particular appointment and saying how wonderful it was. I have something to tell you. When Bill Shorten agrees with something, I'll probably have inevitably to be very worried to agree with. So there is something wrong when you get everybody from the other side, some of the most radical people, actually think you have done the right thing. When they start telling me that I'm doing a right thing, then it's time for me to think different. Because uh, that's how I measure things. When you get someone who is really unreasonable, and really radical on the other side, telling me how wonderful I am, then I can start to get really worried about. Yeah, uh, the problem with uh, the current government is they, they only want to hear uh, the, the left saying nice things about them. They, yeah. they're not, they don't really want to get uh, down in the trenches. Though it didn't um, uh, fill me with confidence that um, Rosalind Croucher's, I think it was second or third day as president of the commission, they released that um, report on, you know, on sexual assault and harassment at uh, university campuses, which was... Uh, I, I looked through the report and so did a lot of a lot of people, and it was easy to see the the flaws in the report. Yet this was yeah. under her presidency, you know, reported by mainstream media as gospel truth. 
Yeah, well, I tell everyone here to be very careful. For instance, like if I have to see a lady in my office, I have to leave the door open. Another thing, I would never take a lift with a, with a lady with me because it's very, very dangerous. Um, now, these sort of things have gone out of control. So it's um, anything can be used against you and you can be easily, you know, labeled for something you haven't done, accused of something you haven't done. So I, to, I tell everyone to be very careful. And that's that's the reality of things. I mean, even what you're saying, class, can be used against you. We have no such thing as academic freedom anymore. Uh, for instance, like a student of mine make a comment and he got into trouble. I'm not going to go enter in details because I can't, but uh, if you discuss a, a subject in class, one of your colleagues can actually go to the administration and say that you said something that was not what he or she wanted to hear. So we, it's amazing, you know, it's an amazing thing that uh, the left has completely forgotten anything about uh, about protecting freedom of, of speech. It seems almost like if it's the final stage of the long march through the institutions. Because of course, it, it looks like they were in favor of freedom only when they were still taking over in the process of taking over. Now they are mainstream. I hate to be called a conservative, to be, fl to be frank with you. I think I'm very countercultural these days. I, the students like it, by the way. I hate to be called a conservative by any student. I always say conservatives are the lefties. Uh, you know, they are the new cons conservatives. They are those who are actually the establishment. We are no longer the establishment. I'm the only one here. I I'm the last of the Mohicans. So I, I, it's it's good because the students tell me, well, you are very uh, countercultural. You know, you say things that nobody saying. Said, oh, uh, that that's what I do. I'm a, uh, I'm doing a, a classical liberal revolution over here, and I think it's important. That's what you have to do to be bold and courageous, and, and to tell the truth because uh, it's not so common these days. The truth is not so usual to be. You know. Uh, to be to be discussed, we don't have this kind of discussions. Uh, it, it can count against you, and if you if are trapped into this, it can cost you everything. It can cost you your job, your career, your bank account, your family. They go after you. They probably cannot kill you yet, but the rest they can take away everything you have.